today I'm going to start sowing the main crop carrots and as usual these will be in my water tank. The variety is sweet candle. The soil in these tanks has got no nutrients in at all. In fact these have been in probably two years at least. It's quite sifted so there's no real big stones in. And uh, the way I do for my spacing, I've got these two grids here, different sizes obviously. For the bigger carrots I'll use this one, that will be the first one I use. And what I'll use that in conjunction with the dibber. So this just goes straight down onto the soil in the tank and just roughly find the centre of each square, press the dibber in, put it down to the depth I want, as it comes, and then repeat that for the rest of the grid. So it's 35 stations bored out now. As you can see, using that grid it actually gets some space in quite evenly. I'll be filling these holes in with the clover seed and modular compost and adding about three or four carrot seeds into each one and then just topping it up with a little bit of vermiculite. I've sieved the soil and it's, it is like tal compared to this compost is. It's, uh, it's moist which is good because there's probably no need to water it when it does it. But the downside will be it will probably stick to the funnel as I put in the elbow. Not to worry, we'll have a go anyway. That's the base of each sewing station now it's been levelled out and firmed. I'm just going to give each one a little dusting of water ready to receive the seed. I've sown four carrot seeds as closely as possible to the centre of each planting station which makes evicting the three non-runners easier. All I'll do now is fill these with a mixture of seed sowing compost and vermiculite. So that's the first box of sweet candle done, 35 in all. I'll be uh, sewing another box in two weeks time and uh, two week intervals after that. It'll be at least four boxes, maybe six, depends if we've got the salad out of the other boxes. I've just got my sunflowers out of the uh, greenhouse on the allotment. These haven't been watered for three or four days, you can see they're starting to wilt. There's no problem with that, I'll just rehydrate them, but what I'm going to do now is pot them onto probably 4 inch pots and 12 centimetre pots and that will be the last potting before they go out into the main beds. After potting on a bit of water as you can see the sunflowers have picked up really nice now these will be staying in the greenhouse until they're ready to go out i'm going to be sowing some uh, french beans this one's two favorites of mine one's called blue lake and the other one's called cobra these are straight pods climb up poles just like a normal runner bean and uh, high in vitamins as well i'll be sowing 15 seeds of each. It does say on the packet for both types that the planting depth is around one inch, two and a half centimetres. You can preach it these seeds on kitchen roll, look just like normal beans, sweet corn, that sort of thing. But for this one I've decided to go straight into the compost. This is clover seed and modular compost I'm using and it's been done in a uh, root trainers. I'm 
I'm going to start sowing parsnips now. Uh, I'll grow eight in a row, and I'll be growing four rows, so that's a total of 32. Number of ways of sowing parsnips. Some people pre-chip the seeds in rolls. I'd prefer to sow direct in the ground for fear of damaging the taproot, because if you do do that, it can cause the parsnip to fork. This is my marking board. You've probably seen it before. And I'll be just bodging the holes in first and then counting them out with a deep pole. eight holes marked out now. What I'll do is get my steel pole and I'll knock that down probably around about a foot 30 centimetres maybe a bit deeper and then I'll make the conical hole and then fill it with sifted compost. If the compost is dry it's well worth putting a, just a watering can over the top just to bind it otherwise the hole does sometimes collapse when you make the cone. There's the first eight holes bored out, didn't take long, quite easy. I don't know if you can get the scale of this, it's the top of the black mark up there. That's where I've, how deep I've got. And this hammer's really helped a lot. I bought this off my mate and uh, it's got a nickname of Thor for obvious reasons. So uh, that's the eight holes bored in there now. What I need to do is get some finely sieved compost and fill these holes. I'm using uh, clava seed and modular compost here. Really, it shouldn't need doing on the sieve, but I'll just put it in and give it a whirl. The bonus of having very fine soil is that parsnips, like carrots, when the tap break goes down, it will take the weakest line down. So if it, it, it's an obstruction, such as a stone or something, that usually causes it to fork. One final thing in preparing this row, I fit these these plastic collars. Them are uh, just uh, storm water downpipe off a drain, and uh, I put these as centre as I can in the hole that we've just prepared. Now this does a number of things. First of all, it concentrates the seed when you sow them towards the centre of the cone we've already prepared, and secondly, it'll protect the seedlings as they're growing for any damage that might be caused by the hoe as well. As the seedlings get about 25 millimetres high, I'll cut out the ones that we don't want and just keep one to grow properly. I don't rip the seedlings out for fear of risk damaging the roots of the other one that we were going to keep. So that's all that left is to finish this row. So that's the first row of eight done. Three more rows to go, and I'll get back to you. I came across some uh, thin lath I didn't realise I'd got. So I've knocked this little frame up on the top, covered it with environment. And it's handy just to pop on, keeps the butterflies and that out. I'll probably put a hook and eye fasteners on the end, and uh, that'll make it easier to take on and off. So that's the 32 stations all in, the collars on. 
Now we're ready to sow the seed. The variety of parsnip I'm growing this year is a favourite of mine. Over the past two or three years, it's done very well for me, and it's called Gladiator F1. I can't emphasise enough that parsnip seed is very, very temperamental germinating, and it's important that you have fresh seed. I always buy fresh seed every year, make sure it's in date. Try and sow the parsnip seeds on a calm day because these are so light they'll just fly out and you can guarantee the ones that do get away will germinate. <laughs> I'm trying to aim these towards the centre of the collar as possible without touching. The seeds are all in place now. For the sake of throwing ones away which I'm never going to use again, I thought I'd double up and treble up in some cases. There's about six seeds in each compartment. So all that's left now is to just top these off with a mixture of sieve compost and vermiculite. All watered in and finished. I'm just enjoying the last few minutes of the sun before it drops down. I thought I'd finish this one off with a little story I thought you might enjoy. In our region, TV region, we have a thing called People's Project where organisations can tender for lottery grants and awards. And it wasn't until I heard the word allotment that I took notice and I realised that there was an allotment involved about three or four miles away from where they are. It was run by a lady called Sally Hilton and a couple of other colleagues and they together have a thing called the Crafty Gardener. The project looks after people with learning difficulties, mental disorder and also anxiety problems, stuff like that. And the, it's amazing how this thing brings people out of the shells. I decided I'd got about half a carrier bag full of seeds that I was, probably wasn't going to use again. It was stuff I'd collected off magazines and stuff Pam Kemp had sent me. So I got in touch with Sally and asked if she'd be interested in for her group. And of course she jumped up the chance. So four, four or five days later, Sally came down with a couple of the members. There was Alex and Ange, I think. And uh, they came round to the site, had a look, walk around and visited the plots and then I think they enjoyed it. It was during the, the course of the tour of the, the site that I, I spoke to Sally, asked her about the filming that I'd seen on television. And that had been done a couple of weeks, three weeks before. It was at that point that Alex, who was with us, said uh, he didn't attend the filming because he was away in, I think he's Dubai or something like that. Anyway, uh, it wasn't until I was about to leave that I found out that when Alex was away, he was actually representing Great Britain for the Special Olympics, the World Games in Abu Dhabi. And not only that, he'd come away with a gold and silver medal in the table tennis. And Wow, it's, uh, so I'd got an Olympian gold medalist on my allotment. <laughs> Anyway, getting back to the story, their bid and the vote was successful and they won £42,500 or something like that, which will do great help in continuing developing the area that they're in. I've been invited to their site, so hopefully in the summer I'll take the camera along and show you what they're up to. That's about it for this one. Um, thanks very much to the new subscribers who will keep coming along and don't forget keep it in that subscribe button down there and the bell and you'll know when I set a new uh, video up in motion that's about it for this one the work's continuing so I'll see you again soon bye for now